Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel Working on Exploring. We are back in the shop, as you can tell, and we had one major project get completed. That was our solar panel, which was the previous video we released. And now we are spending some time on this old guy. So our old Lance 1130, we traveled in it for a couple years. We were the third owner. When we bought the camper, there did not seem to be any hints of water damage. Uh, Steve was aware that the skirts looked a little deteriorated on the inside, those panels down there on the bottom that overhang past the truck bed. But no biggie, it's not a structural problem. But not long after we owned it, he realized that there was a soft spot in the floor. If there's any type of water that penetrates through the shell of the camper, you are going to have some wood rot. So make sure you really scrutinize some of those older campers up there that are for sale if that's what you're looking for. You can find some great deals, some well-cared and well-loved campers and well-maintained. I mean, we have maintained this camper. We have sealed the roof a couple of times. We've had to do some minor tweaks here and there, but the wood rot, big problem. And now that it has been decommissioned and we are back from traveling in the new camper and new rig, it is time to get this baby ready to put it up for sale. So. The work is going into it. It is gonna be a solid, solid old camper. <laughs> Just like us. We are old, but we are solid also. So stick around, uh, check it out. I think you'll appreciate some of the hard work that's going into this guy. And uh, it's actually pretty shocking how bad the wood rot, wood rot is. If you haven't seen a camper just crumble in your hands, it's here. We will show you how that looks. Okay, this might be a little weird. I've just been uh, operating on the Lance 1130. It had a, evidently a long-standing leak in the water tank which rotted the floor. Uh, the prior owner looks like he had done, made an effort to repair the floor and then threw a bunch of uh, laminate flooring in there to, to possibly cover up the fact that it was poorly done. <clears throat> I started uh, about four hours ago pulling the bottom off. I'm going to take you inside now. There's no light inside of my headlamp. That's why it's going to be weird. I'm going to show you what it looks like. So here is the entry, and it's got laminate flooring in it. Camper otherwise is in pretty good shape. <clears throat> and you can see that the water tank was in the step uh, into the bunk, which has now been removed. The water tank's been removed. And what we have is a fairly decent sized hole in the floor. <clears throat> and it goes, little, I've torn it out from side to side from the front, about half the length of the camper. Um, I will say that about 80% of it came out with fingers. It just It was just crumbling. I will say, but in, in Lance's defense, this portion right here, you can see possibly see how well the oriented strand board is attached to the, the lumber that's in there. That The portion that was not compromised was uh, real difficult to get apart. It was very well glued. The materials were very strong, but <clears throat> as you can see there's almost no structure of the floor left. And so this whole thing will be... Uh, I'll return the, uh, the wood uh, supports in here. I, I don't use the, the the bridge stapling, which is typically in the RV industry, is not what I favor. I'm going to use pocket screws <coughs> and glue the former repair that was done by somebody, uh, probably the flooring guy, was done with uh, some wood screws and some one by twos and and, and not glued together and, and very easy to remove. I uh, really hadn't done much, but uh, screws and po screws and pocket screws. Are, are the keys to making this work and glue. So you can see some of the 
some of the cross members have been cut back because uh, I cut off everything that was rotted. And so I will graft on 1x2s and 2x2s onto this whole thing and uh, restore the entire thing. I will uh, put a uh, sheet of Luan on the bottom and then I will, which, which will be glued and stapled on. <clears throat> and then once that's in place, I'll insulate it. And I'm going to be able to slide the entire passenger side of the camper. Is, is uh, I've cut it open so that I can slide about a four foot by four foot piece of oriented strand board in here to restore the floor. So and it will be glued down. So this is going to be uh, pretty substantial all over again, but it's quite a hole right now. To show you what the debris looks like, um, this is the debris, and you can see a lot of it. Can, gonna have to be scooped up with a spoon. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting. So, this material right here, this is a floor leveling compound, and you'll notice that after they got done repairing the floor, they still poured a half inch of floor leveling compound in there to make the floor level, which make, means there was a big sag in the floor even though they'd repaired it. It's just, there's nothing to it. No wonder you can't walk on it. And this is why it was so easy to take most of it apart. Looking at it from the outside, you can see the, uh, the wheel well access door here has been removed. This spot right here is where the, the, the OSB panel that I'm going to return in here is going to be slid in here. A little bit of this wall has been compromised, but there's a big aluminum plate that goes over here in the entire front. So there's very little of this uh, material here that I'm going to have to cosmetically repair or just structurally repair it. Might just put some a, a layer of fiberglass over it with some uh, 1708 uh, biaxial mat to hold it together. Um, there's probably a couple of hundred screws here is what the quarter or eighth inch plate diamond plate front nose cover was in, installed with. It took me quite a while to remove. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to put every single screw back in because I don't want any leaks, but that's probably what was holding this front together, is the diamond plate front nose cap. This is the view from underneath. Um, this pretty much covers about half the entire floor of the camper. Um, so you're going to see a whole lot more restoration of the, the framing of the floor, and the top of the floor will be returned to, well, once I put the uh, frame in there, I'm going to put the bottom skin on, which is a skin of Luan plywood. Uh, once I get that far, I'm going to fiberglass resin coat the entire inside of the floor, including includes the inside of the bottom skin. And then on top of the bottom skin, I'm going to actually put a sheet of 1708 biaxial mat fiberglass to strengthen and to uh, waterproof the bottom. Okay, so far. Uh, we've removed all the rotted material and squared off the, the, the cuts of all the remaining good material so I can attach new material to it. So all the framework you see in here is all new, almost all new material, a little bit of its uh, prior material. And the next step will be to put the eighth inch uh, material on the bottom. And once I have that there, then I'm going to resin coat all of this material here. So if it ever leaks again, this material will be impervious to water. The project for this morning is to return the floor to its prior glory. Uh, so far the floor frame has in, in, it's been installed. The underlayment, which, the underside, which is an eighth inch uh, birch plywood, has been installed. It's been uh, polyester resin coated on both sides. The, the top deck in here has also been polyester resin coated on both sides, but before I put the top deck on, I've got to replace the insulation. This is some of the old insulation that was in there that the, the prior owner had done some retrofit on, and so this is this is similar to what's in there. Actually, this is about a about a one and a half pound per cubic foot uh, expanded polystyrene. What's in there is about a two and a half pound per cubic foot, which is more rigid to actually support the floor. But what I'm actually going to put in it because I have this is I'm going to put two layers of three quarter polyisocyanurate in there, which is about twice as insulating as this material is. This is uh, the uh, EPS is about uh, an R value of about three to three and a half per inch and this polyiso is about six to six and a half per inch. So it's much more insulating. So 
Once I get the, insula the, the foam insulation in, then I'll uh, place glue on the top of the frame and, and install the, the floor and, and screw it down. And at that point in time, then I'll screw the, the floor back up to the bottom of the wall. So Steve uh, and I just got the subfloor in. He already finished the insulation, so step one and two are done. And now he's gonna work on just laying the laminate back in. Also, to clarify, the source of this wood rot that we had was a very old fresh water tank leak, which unfortunately was poorly repaired and then covered over with new laminate flooring inside the camper. The tank never has leaked while we've owned the lamps. Do not try this at home. The attempt to apply one large piece of fiberglass cloth underneath failed miserably and turned into a very sticky mess. We have another repair on the lamps to complete and share with you coming up soon. Until then, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up and throw a comment down below. Thank you for your support, and if you wish to continue supporting the channel, subscribe. We are here to share and inspire others who are building and traveling in RVs. So now, we're going to go back to work so we can get back to exploring soon.